The year is 2021. My name is and I want to tell you about the decision that shaped the fate of the entirety of Europe. I'm writing this message in hopes of it finding you someday. This is a, an enormous strike against freedom of speech on the internet. The life-changing events started in September of 2018 when the European Parliament Committee of Legal Affairs introduced to us to the now infamous Article 13. Committee said that this law was supposed to help content creators because it would make companies liable for the content uploaded on their websites, not the creators themselves. We've been saying it's about getting fair pay for creators, and in Article 13, that is the clarification okay, of liability. Sorry, I'm, I'm, the I'm intentions sorry. were good, as always, but the public saw it for what it was, censorship. A lot of companies, experts, and the general public spoke out against it, while the big record label and production companies, as well as a lot of artists, supported it. Nothing will be censored. We want it all still to stay there. We just want to be paid a little bit of money for it. It was clear early on that Article 13 was a very flawed inclusion in the European Union's copyright directive. European Parliament stated that this decision will only affect big tech companies like Google, Facebook, YouTube, and other tech giants. But you should never bite the hand that feeds you. It's a shame Axel Vaz didn't know that. This is the right way forward. Because of the newly introduced law, companies could be sued for copyrighted content that they allowed on their websites. European Parliament Committee said that the best way to deal with this issue regarding copyrighted materials is for companies to introduce better, more effective content filtering technologies. They will have to install uh, uh, some filters, which is a technical solution, so-called upload filters, and that is a big concern for the opponents of this reform. Problem was, was that those technologies already existed, but they just weren't good enough. The big tech companies were already dumping huge amounts of money into developing these filters, but they just were still not nearly as advanced as Article 13 would require them to be. We still had hope that on the final voting for or against Article 13, that the parliament would vote against it. Before the vote, there was a petition against Article 13 on the website change.org. It was signed by over 5 million people. Over 5 million people expressed their anger with the new law, but the higher power was convinced that those were bots because most of the petitioners used Google accounts, and Google was one of the leading companies who fought against the new law. Isn't that ridiculous? After the parliament ignored the petition, over 100,000 people went out into the streets all around Europe protesting with signs like, We are not bots. <laughs> The European Union still ignored the protest and proceeded with the debates and, ultimately, the final vote. Before that, the Parliament also voted on making more changes to Article 13, but this notion was rejected, losing the vote 312 to 317. The fucked up thing is that 13 MEPs pressed the wrong button by accident. Ten of those wanted to change their vote in favor of making more corrections to Article 13, which would have changed the result of the vote, therefore Article 13 itself. Good to know that the people running Europe are competent enough to press the right button. The final vote took exactly 14 seconds. The decision that shaped our whole lives took only 14 seconds. Of course, Article 13 was passed. Now it was up to the European Union countries to change their laws accordingly. Worst part was that a lot of people pushed the idea of Article 13 banning memes as the biggest issue presented by the Article 13. They even called it the meme ban. And you bet your butt that memes are gonna be part of this. It's gonna limit- Poor bastards. Maybe if they focused on the real issues, on the bigger picture, Maybe then the government would have listened and not just dismissed it as a joke. It was quiet. Calm, even. Everyone seemed to have forgotten that Article 13 existed until France finished the process of implementing the new laws in December of 2020. With the new laws in place, the big tech companies made the only business decision that made sense. Denying France access to its services. The other choice would have been facing many lawsuits for every piece of copyrighted content that slipped through the flawed filters. A few days later, the people of France reached their breaking point. Streets were filling with riots. People were fighting to get their free speech. Or, in other words, their Facebook accounts back. The next country that followed this exact pattern was Spain. Then Italy. 
Sweden, Belgium, and other countries also lit up in flames, so to speak. On the 23rd of December, we lost all communications with France. This event was later labeled the Black Christmas amongst the people. It was the start of the end. Over the following months, most of the European countries went dark as well. All the communication channels were silent. Silent as a graveyard. Even non-European Union countries like Switzerland went dark. Maybe it was the surrounding chaos, nobody knows. As far as we knew, nothing and no one were getting in or out of the dark territories. Hell, the entirety of Europe could have been torn up by wars, everyone could have been dead, and we wouldn't even know. Eventually, there were only two countries left with active communications. Latvia and Germany, because they were the last two countries to implement the new laws. Cities are in ruin. Many people fled to hide in the rural areas, including me. State of emergency has just become the norm. How's your wife? <sighs> Honestly, it's not good. She's getting worse. We're also running out of medication. I don't know what to do anymore. I just wish I could do more. I'm sorry to hear that. Have you tried to find a doctor? I have, but unsuccessfully. It's too dangerous to wander around nowadays. We haven't been in contact with anyone outside our house. I feel you. I haven't seen a living soul in a while now. It seems like everyone is in hiding or gone. I just wish I could see a face other than my own. It's funny how we've talked for so long, but I have no idea how you even look like. <laughs> yeah. I imagine you as a stereotypical German, like a, a big chubby dude with a large glass of beer in your hand. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty spot on. Except for the beer part. God, I miss it. I guess Oktoberfest is cancelled this year. <laughs> Come in. It's been six days, man. Please, if you're hearing this, just respond. Hello? Are you there? Hello? You awake? You there? Hey, 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 man. Damn, good to hear your voice again. Likewise. I thought you left like everybody else. Why did you disappear? I'm sorry, we ran out of fuel for the generator. I have plenty now, though. And trust me, I'm not planning on leaving again. It's more dangerous outside than I thought. I was just trying to find a doctor for my wife. How did we go? Did you find one? No, sadly I didn't. But I did find more medicine, so at least that's good. It's going to help her for a short while. When I was out, I learned some new information. It seems like someone is guarding the borders and not letting people out. I also heard gunshots in the distance. Jesus, do you have any idea who might be doing that? No, not really. I just know that they are seriously armed. They look like soldiers. Did you see them? Yeah, but from a great distance. Didn't look like Germans. That sounds serious. Do you have a plan? I can't move anywhere. My wife is in no condition to travel. We'll just have to stay put and hope for the best. You hold on, brother. You both do. 
you never know when things are going to turn out for the better. Hello? You there? Yes, come in. Someone's at the door. Speaking Russian, I think. Hello? Can you repeat that, please? Klaus, are you there? Come on, respond! Fucking respond! Klaus, come in, please. Klaus. Radio check. Hello? Does anybody hear this? Come in. Come in. Calling out for anybody. Radio check. Is anybody receiving this message? Radio check. Come in. Radio check. Calling for anybody. Radio's gone silent for a month now. I'm running out of food and water. <laughs> I haven't seen a human being in such a long time. I'm not sure what's going on in the outer world. Do they even know what's happening here? I have to try. I just have to. In hopes for a better future. Yours truly. John. The letter is dated 4th of April 2021, 10 years ago. It's a miracle it reached us after all this time. What do we do now, sir?